Uh, so let's move on to our second and final story for the day. Let me make sure I'm doing this properly. Uh, recently, you know, I have released a video on this channel about uh, schools reopening and uh, uh, what that means and how the uh, the teachers union, the specifically the American Federation of Teachers, is pushing back against the Trump administration um, in regards to uh, the schools being reopened. Um, I mentioned that the AFT, the American Federation of Teachers, has a uh, big document about how to protect yourself legally if um, you don't feel comfortable as an educator to go back into schools. Um, or, or even suggest that people should go back into schools. Like, what are, are there, are there um, legal protections in place that we might not widely know of? And there are. So they wrote that, and I do want to do a breakdown of their guidelines um, and their uh, legal protection plans. So uh, keep a lookout for that, folks. Um, I will be doing some of that. But, you know, this article, this comes from Payday Report. Uh, like I said, we'll be, we'll be talking about that. So since it has something to do with the labor movement, that is a good place for me to go and get news from the labor movement. And the Payday Report is fantastic. Uh, anyway, so Randy we uh, Weingarten is the president of uh, the American Federation of Teachers. Uh, and basically uh, what she said is um, there needs to be a combination of um, you know, online and in-person instruction. Uh, and I agree. I think Zoom classes, uh, though, look, none of this stuff is ideal, right? But we're not in ideal settings. Uh, we're in less than ideal settings. And we have to be adaptable. We have to be a little flexible. And we have to be a little amendable. Um, and that goes for the federal government as well. Uh, and... If that means that schools have to go to Zoom teaching, then it looks like schools have to go to some Zoom teaching. And, you know, one of the things you could do as far as in-person teaching goes, because you can't have large groups gathering. That's just, um, I think, oh, that's, that's a little irresponsible. Um, you know, I, I have friends that do uh, outdoor comedy shows, and I'm and I'm okay with it. I don't know how comfortable I would be in this moment because of the rise in cases that we're seeing across the country. Had the had the number of cases kind of tapered out, I feel like I would be a little bit more comfortable with that kind of an idea. But right now, I'm 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 like, ooh, I don't know, you know. If this is the direction we need to go, small gatherings usually are fine because you can, you know, it's like trusted friends and shit like that is like if you're sitting by a fire or on a porch or, you know, just hanging out with a couple people, like three or four people or something like that, it should be fine um, because you can know that those folks are responsible, uh, you know, and, and you know where they've been because they're close friends, so on and so forth. Uh, so in that same vein, you could hire a tutor for your kids, right? So that's kind of the in-person version of teaching mixed with, with the Zoom classrooms and things of that sort. And one of the things that could be done, um, because you're going to have um, low middle income folks uh, within, the, within the school district itself, is one of the things you could do is, uh, you know, you could have parents say, hey, why don't we open up a fund here and, you know, we can make it like a monthly fund and you could use that kind of like that Patreon model for, for community-based tutors. That creates a job. Uh, you, have a, you have a pool, you know, so let's say there's a family that's like, well, we can only throw in five bucks a month. But there's, you know, the rich kids down the street that's like, we'll throw in 50 or we'll throw in a hundred or whatever, but everybody gets to be a part of this community and make sure that everybody's kid is taken care of. Uh, so you could have the community kind of come together to hire a tutor 
or or multiple tutors, right? Because if if it's if it's we're talking about a district, there's going to be a couple hundred kids, uh, and one tutor for a couple hundred kids is kind of insane. But now you have a community pool. So let's say out of that community pool, you have some parents donating. Let's say there's like four grand a month coming into this pool now. Um, you have the Zoom education, and then you have the in-person tutor training. And you can coordinate this within the community. But that's going to mean community communication. That's going to mean that you're, you can't have a bunch of people that are like, well, I'm paying this much, and I think I'm more important because I make more. No, it doesn't. F no one cares how much money you fucking make. We care about these kids getting a fucking education during a really difficult time. So shut the fuck up about your... No one cares about your paycheck. No one gives a shit. Shut the fuck up. It's kind of like having a tutor on retainer, essentially. Right? So if your kid's not doing good in math, maybe you get... You know, let's let's get little Timmy and little Becky. We'll, you know, we'll get them, get some masks. We'll go over somewhere and we'll make sure that there's a tutor and we'll we'll have some hands on uh hands on tutoring that's a possibility that's a possibility uh it's going to take some fucking work and effort and organizing but that's what the unions do that's what they're fucking good at the unions are good at organizing so um that's you can make that sort of stuff happen and you can make that sort of stuff happen with the union's help uh with the teacher's help and with the community coming together uh and putting aside their bullshit now trump has uh threatened to cut federal funding if the schools don't reopen i talked about that in the video as well uh that he has threatened to cut federal funding which is ridiculous and you know uh, with with this thing where are all the people in uproar where where are all these people that are like they're defunding teachers you know all the people that were just like defunding the police this is crazy where i mean what are we going to do about safety when they come out to defund the teachers they're like well we got to we got to make some cuts we got to you know where's the money it's just cr but when it comes to the cops they're like we got to just give them the fucking money like that's where are those people at where are those people bitching about the fact that these kids and these teachers are not getting paid properly Oh, we call them heroes, but we don't want to pay, pay, pay them like they are. We think they're important parts of society, but we don't want to treat you like you are. Where the fuck are these people that were bitching at me and all the other fucking people talking about defunding the police, talking about community policing? That were like, oh, it seems unreasonable. Maybe we should go to reforms. Yeah, reforms like shooting people in the leg. That's a reform idea that Joe Biden came up with. If three strikes are out, you want to do that reform? Where are these people? Why, why aren't they speaking up about this shit? Betsy DeVos, Secretary of Education and uh, sibling of... Uh, uh, what's his fucking name? The guy that runs that mercenary organization. Uh, Eric Prince. Eric Prince. He runs that mercenary organization. Contract Killers. Uh, you know, the woman that is... Um, that is... Uh, <clears throat> brother's, uh, brother is a contract murder. She runs the education department. Uh, the Secretary of Education. She said the states are getting their budget cut by 20%. And, uh, you know, this is, this is kind of uh, like the, the teachers have to do more work. They have to learn Zoom. They have to figure out how to translate all of their, um, th uh, you know, regular curriculum and regular teaching methodologies into an online digital world, which means they might have to work on presentations. They might still have to figure out how to uh, access new technologies to make sure that they're still grading things properly. There's a lot of new challenges and new tasks that are put into place uh, for something like digital learning, right? And again, not ideal, but kind of necessary right now. It falls into that category of uh, when states are cutting, cutting budgets by 20% here is uh, more work for less pay. More work, and, and we're seeing that everywhere, right? Entertainers are kind of feeling this right now. 
because there is a lot of digital content going out there and you know the 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 notion that i have seen as someone that creates digital content is that there are certain people that will kind of look at something like that and um and feel like it's less valued like the layman will will make that uh, as a less valued thing um you know because it's digital it's online it's intangible they can get it whenever they want they kind of take it for granted uh in in that sense um but the true fans that really appreciate this stuff, the people that I've, you know, I keep in contact with the, with some of these with some of these folks, will message on a weekly basis and uh, chit chat and so on and so forth. The true fans, the people that have donated, the people that have become sustaining members, um, that share my content around, um, you know, that that are that are taking part in that discourse we talked about earlier. Um, those folks get it. They know the effort. And they know the work that's going into all of this stuff. And they understand that it's not ideal. And they are willing to fund that sort of stuff. Because this is something that they believe in. And first of all, fucking I super appreciate that shit. But if you want to translate something like that into, into the educational realm, uh, why aren't we doing that though? Why aren't we having parents and, you know fucking community leaders and uh politicians who believe in the value and power of education because they'll come out and say it every time they're about to get reelected about how important education is about how important their teachers are about how these heroes are teacher uh, uh, these teachers are heroes right and they'll fucking come out and say all this shit but when it comes down to it when it comes down to actually funding it they won't they won't Where what what is the what is the issue there? Where are the true fans of education coming in to stand behind this, right? I mean, the American Federation of Teachers is a is a real fan of the education process, which is why they are organizing and coming together to ensure that the, these kids can have like a viable source of education in the fall when we're probably going to see a second wave. Where 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 are the politicians? push him back you know i don't i don't hear a peep from any of these politicians that are looking at certain states and being like why are you cutting your education budget by 20 percent you should you should realize that if if they're if the brick and mortar buildings are not being used you freeze the rent on the brick and mortar building you don't collect maybe you don't collect as many property taxes for it right but you should be giving the teachers a little bit of a raise you should be giving them hazard right now Where are the politicians trying to do that? I have fans that believe in the shit that I do and that want to donate to my stuff. I have people that I believe in what they do and, I'm, and I want to donate to their stuff. I want to amplify their voices in some way. That was what the last segment was all about. Where are the politicians that believe in education so much that they are they that, that they have they are not pushing legislation forward to try to increase the budget the federal budget of education in a really difficult time to ensure the safety of children, parents, and teachers. Twenty five percent of teachers are at, at risk for COVID if they go in. Twenty five percent. That's a quarter of the fucking uh, the education system that is at risk if we open schools willy nilly without a plan like the Trump administration wants to. So the American Federation of Teachers has released a 34 page document, legal document about how to use the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, or the Medical Leave Act to ensure that. If the teachers don't feel safe uh, going into the schools right now, uh, they will not. And um, I think that's fair. I think if the teachers don't feel safe, if the parents don't feel safe sending their kids into school, they shouldn't. Especially because in the fall we're probably going to see a second wave. Especially because of that. Randy Weingarten, Randy Weingarten, the president of the AFT, has come out and said that she's, they're prepared to strike in, in the fall. 
I mentioned that uh, in the video I released on Thursday. Uh, if you're watching this the day that this comes out. Uh, uh, I mentioned that that's what we're probably going to see. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of August we're going to see a really big teacher's action. A uh, pretty major teacher strike coming up. I wouldn't be surprised. Especially if the budget's being threatened. The lives of kids are being threatened. There's really, it, it really doesn't seem like there's a lot of plan. Of, the AFT has a plan, by the way. The AFT released a plan on how to reopen schools properly. You know whose fucking job that is? The Secretary of Education and the CDC. That's whose job that is. To put out safety guidelines? And they fucking didn't. They, the CDC was like, oh, we'll think about doing it fucking later. They're procrastinating on their own fucking job to deal with the safety of this country. To deal with the safety of kids and educators and families and communities. The AFT has a plan. So if you want to support something for 2020, there you go, labor movement. Support that teacher strike that's coming down. Support the eventual general strike that's coming up. People want to shit on me because I don't want to vote for Joe Biden. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to go with what Ron Placone says. I'm for a general strike 2020. That's what I'm for. Where's that candidate? Seriously, I, I don't see any uh, Democrat or Republican. Nobody's fucking saying anything about this. Who's uh, There's no politician coming out in supporting of the, uh, support of the AFT. Or their plan. They haven't talked about it. Fucking, I'm a comedian that's talking about it. There are very few mainstream sources that have talked about it. Again, this is why people get news from comedians. There's the, what, what's my objective here? What, what's my bias? My bias is that I want people to be safe. I want a logical society. I want a society that's able to uh, participate in discourse. And we can't do that without a, a sound education system that teaches us dis different perspectives, that teaches us critical thinking, that teaches us how to question things properly. You can't do that shit if you're... If you're terrified of the environment that you're in to, to learn. They call it a brain drain. That's what Randy Weingarten called it. Brain drain. Basically, everybody in this situation, if the schools reopen in the fall, everybody is going to be stressed out. Every single person. Teachers are going to be too stressed to do their job properly. The kids are going to be too stressed to, uh, in a potentially unsafe environment to learn properly. That's going to affect their grades. That's going to affect what, what happens to them later down the line with college, with getting a job. Since so much of this shit hinders on your goddamn grade and how much you do on some bullshit standardized tests. And now you're going to increase the amount of stress that, that they're in by potentially putting them in an unsafe environment. And now parents are going to be worried about that shit too. Parents are going to be worried about having their kid in this potentially unsafe environment. Which means that they're going to be thinking about that in the back of their mind. And they're not going to be able to do their fucking job properly. And some of these parents are frontline workers. So they already have that level of stress coming in. Government's not giving them PPEs. It took fucking stores like Target and... and uh, Walmart and shit, like, two months before they gave them proper equipment. Or before they even helped them out with proper, their employees out with proper equipment. And now on top of that, you want to add their kids going to school in a stressful environment. Get the fuck out of here. The stress is real. But, I mean, in, in terms of neoliberalism and conservatism... Right, the Democrats and the Republicans don't give a shit about that. They don't talk about it. That becomes a pre-existing condition to them. So they can charge and make money off of that shit. Stress is real when you're stressed out about certain things, especially finances and health. Those are two big things that people get stressed out about a lot. And right now we are in a pretty heavy financial, financially stressful situation. Pretty heavy. And we're in a pretty heavy health crisis, too. Like, people are pretty paranoid about getting this virus. 
And this is going to affect the quality of the work. It just is. That's just what happens. It's unfortunate. It sucks. But they don't consider that to be a real threat. These are all kind of the periphery things that nobody really wants to address. They're manufacturing this problem. They're manufacturing more stress-related things. And they don't give a shit. If they did, there would be more people pushing the CDC to adopt what the AFT has put out there. Work in tandem with the American Federation of Teachers. Not just in a budgetary way, but in a safety, safety way. To say, okay, let's figure out a safe way to open the schools in the fall. What, are, what do we need to do in order to open schools in the fall? What do we need to do to make that happen? But they're not. And that's 100% going to lead to a strike. I think at the end of August, we're probably going to see one. That's my prediction. I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong about that, but that's my prediction on that. Um, and if you really want to support something right now, Support the teachers' union. See what you can do to help them out. Figure out how to get the community together to support the American Federation of Teachers or any sort of local union that you have in your, in, in, you know, in your districts or neighborhoods or cities or whatever it is. Support them. See what teachers need right now. If you're a parent, I think that's what you should do. For, this, for the sake of your kid's safety or any of that sort of stuff. That's what I think. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Please share it around with a friend or an enemy or whoever you think would enjoy a, a video like this. Uh, to, to share it out, uh, YouTube and Facebook usually suppress content like this. They don't usually show content like this to, to a lot of people. So I very much depend on you guys, the viewers and the fans of this show, to get the word out. Uh, and make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to make sure you're getting notifications about this video. Uh, I have a bunch of different ways that you can financially support this show. One is by just making a one-time donation. You can just make a one-time donation. Say, hey, that was a fucking great video, and I want to support it financially. Here's X amount of whatevers. Uh, another way is by becoming a sustaining member. Sustaining membership gets you free tickets to shows, uh, unreleased stand-up comedy content and storytelling content, and early access to a full uh, holistic episodes of Forkful of Noodles uh, that you get weeks in advance. Weeks in advance, you guys. Uh, and another way to help is by coming to a live show. I've got a bunch of live stand-up comedy performances coming up. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Fringe Festival in Providence, Rhode Island, the, Pro uh, the Fringe PVD. All of these are virtual festivals, by the way, uh, July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. If you want to be part of the virtual live audience, let me know. Send me a message. Leave a comment. Uh, email me, uh, and I'll send you the donation link, and I'll make sure that you're on the list to be a part of the live virtual audience. It's July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m., and then we're on to doing more of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Each week, brand new content, brand new material, and a brand new subject matter. And I donate half the ticket sales to a grassroots organization. Uh, the next one is August 7th, and then on August 14th and August 28th. And then we'll be moving right into the fall. So keep up with these dates. You can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for uh, continuing to come back to support this channel. Until the next one, we'll see you on the road.